Project Scorpio is no more. Say hello to the Xbox One X, or as I like to call it, the OXO Cube. During Microsoft's E3 conference, we learnt a lot about its specs, including the fact that it'll be a true 4K games console. At least, I think that's what they said. 4K, 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 4K. There are also quite a few games on show, 42 in fact, so I've put together a list of nine titles that I'm most excited to play on an Xbox One X. The conference got off to a bit of a wonky start when Dan Greenewalt from Turn 10 Studios forgot he was at a games event for a second and started trying to flog us a car. This is not only the most aggressive expression of Porsche's legendary design, it features the most powerful road-going 911 engine ever made. Like the Xbox One X, it's a monster. Sorry to disappoint you, Dan, but Richard Hammond survived that crash, so Clarkson's not after a new best friend yet. Anyway, when Dan had finished his sales pitch, we were finally treated to some brand new Forza Motorsport gameplay, and oh my word, does it look pretty. Stats fans will be happy to know it will run in native 4K at a rock solid 60 frames per second on the Xbox One X. For anyone who doesn't care about numbers though, all you need to know is it will look super nice and shiny and it will be the game that you'll demo to your friends when they ask you how good the graphics are. Now, this one took me by surprise. The Metro series is back with its third instalment, Metro Exodus, and this time it's gone open world. Everyone's favourite ranger, Artyom, is back for some brand new adventures as he makes his way out of the Moscow Metro and into the dangerous wilderness of post-apocalyptic Russia. Away from the radioactive remains of Moscow, the air is safe to breathe, so Artyom is free to remove his gas mask and start exploring the dilapidated ruins of a long abandoned village. The graphics here look so good it's almost certainly a pre-render, but nevertheless, if 4A games can successfully combine the claustrophobic survival horror gameplay of the first two games with the sandbox adventuring of the Stalker series, you can be sure I'll be rushing to buy the game as soon as it releases. <laughs> yes, I went there. And no, I'm not sorry. Ah, Siwa. My home. The sacred oasis. Oh look, the next Assassin's Creed game is set in Egypt and it charts the origins of the Assassin's Brotherhood. Tell you what, it's a good job that information didn't leak about a million times before this conference aired, because otherwise that surprise would have been completely and utterly ruined. That was sarcasm by the way. Assassin's Creed Oranges puts you in the leather sandals of Bayek, an Egyptian sheriff with a name that sounds like a northern swear word. As you can see in this gameplay, Oranges features lots of climbing, stabbing and sneaking through tall grass. Oh, and you also have a pet eagle which allows you to mark guards and find targets, because of course you do, it's a Ubisoft game. What has happened? The once annual series has had a whole year off to revitalise and refresh the stagnant Assassin's Creed gameplay of old, and by the looks of it there's now a much bigger focus on RPG elements. Weirdly, there also seems to be some kind of player-controlled homing arrows in the game, which is such a ridiculous idea, I can't help but love it.
I've been banging on about wanting Player Unknown's Battlegrounds to come to console ever since it first came out on Steam. It's safe to say that it's my most played game of the year so far, but I struggle to get kills in it because I'm literally the worst at using mouse and keyboard in the world. That's hopefully set to change later in the year though, as Battlegrounds is now announced to come out on Xbox One, with Xbox One X specific upgrades planned later down the line. If you've never had the chance to play this game before because you don't have access to a PC, you're in for a treat. A terrifying, adrenaline-soaked, hilarious treat which gives you a brand new war story to tell your friends each and every time you play it. An afterlife of fighting and troublemaking until all your bits fall off. It's what they would have wanted. Now, make sure your crewmates all have a part to play. We yep. caught our first glimpse of Sea of Thieves during E3 2015, and then the year after that we also got to see a little bit more. This year, surprise surprise, we were treated to even more gameplay from Rare's shared world swashbuckler map, and it still looks amazing. It's the type of game that's best played with friends, and I can only imagine how much fun it'll be going on treasure hunts with the rest of the Eurogamer crew in future episodes of Let's Foreplay. Mainly because it will give me the opportunity to make Johnny swab the poop deck before I force Chris and Aoife to walk the plank. Come on, you didn't expect me to share all that lovely loot with them, did you? I could talk about Crackdown 3's gameplay, but what's the point when the legendary Terry Crews can do it for me? <laughs> now it's time to get to work! <laughs> Time to step up your boom! It's go time! Oh yeah! Welcome to the agency! Sticking with the wacky cell shaded art direction of the first two games, this here trailer shows off a slice of explosive action from the campaign, which for the first time ever can be played in four player co op. This moody looking dungeon crawler is called Ashen, and no, it's not a game about this guy. Hello! Described by Eurogamer's Chris Donlan as looking like a hipster Dark Souls, this was one of the only non big name games in Microsoft's conference to actually get me excited. Details are thin on the ground, but supposedly the gameplay contains elements of classic role-playing games such as King's Quest and the emergent storytelling of survival games like DayZ, all mixed together with Souls-like combat. Couple this with the fact that you can play the game in co-op with a friend, and I definitely say it's one to keep an eye on. We've already seen enough Shadow of War gameplay to last until release day, but instead of growing sick of it, each and every time Warner releases another trailer, I see something that makes me want to play it even more. The main focus of the Microsoft Conference trailer was on the more dynamic Nemesis system. It seems to be less focused on drawing us out of the gameplay to a separate menu, and more on how the various duels and power struggles play out in real time. We also got a proper look at how the domination mechanic works here, with it seemingly being possible to trigger from a short distance away, at least on the larger enemies like Olog High. You serve the bright lord now. The really interesting thing though is the Olog High's demeanor afterwards. He's chatty, very chatty, instead of the more zombie-like drones that feature in Shadow of Mordor. To hazard a case, he said. You're all gonna die horribly. Yeah, my kind of black. Bam. Looking 
good. Nice, you've got a mortar equipped. Yeah, I got it on the weekend. You lead the way, I'll follow. The final game on the list was a big surprise for everyone. BioWare's new game Anthem was teased during EA's conference, but during the gameplay reveal at Microsoft's event, we actually got to see some proper multiplayer gameplay. Looking a lot like Destiny, if Destiny was crossed with Crisis, Horizon Zero Dawn and a little bit of Titanfall, Anthem is certainly quite a looker. The demo showcased a vast open world where you and a team of up to four friends can explore dense jungles and wildernesses boosting around by jetpack or mech-enhanced running. The ruins and treasures of a sci-fi world are there for you to find, along with Destiny-style exotic weapons that are dropped by defeated enemies. Oh, come on. Be something good. Oh, yes, Jerry's wrath. Oh, nice. There's not much information out there about the story yet, but it looks like most of the fun will come from exploring the world and finding new places to shoot and loot in. Have you been in there yet? I haven't. Oh, we should do that later with Kim. <laughs> yeah, you could use the XP. So those were the nine games that most caught my eye during Microsoft's E3 showcase. But what about you? Were there any games I missed off the list that piqued your interest? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to check out the videos on screen now for more of our E3 coverage. Goodbye. Anyone, we're under attack. Anyone in the area, we're under attack. I think that's part of Praxis mission. You can equip your Javelin exosuit with gear that brings devastating power to combat.